Well, I am a day late, but I like to say better late than never. It's Judah Brody here to give you a dose of the NFL. A lot has happened this year in the playoffs, but first, let's start with the Super Bowl. This was the first time in 53 years of Super Bowls that the cities matched up were the same as the World Series. That's right, 98 days before, we saw the fall classic baseball, Red Sox and the Dodgers end. Back to the Super Bowl, we'll talk about how these teams got here later, but first, if I could describe it in one word, it would be snooze fest. Or is that two words? No offense to those that like defensive football, pun unintended, but there was only a combined 16 points in the game. This was the lowest scoring Super Bowl in history. In fact, there were only four scoring plays. Let's count them down. One, uh... One 49-yard field goal for the Patriots by Steven Gostkowski in the second quarter left the score 3-0 in the favor of the Pats at halftime. The Rams followed up with a 53-yard field goal by Greg Zuerlin in the third quarter, but only after eight consecutive punts did the Rams get this. A quarter later, we finally saw the first and only touchdown of the game after a stunning 29-yard catch by Rob Gronkowski allowed the Patriots to get close enough to run the ball two yards, scoring six, and they also got the extra points, making it 10-3 Patriots. Now Gronk has had back, hamstring, and after Sunday, leg injuries this season, and according to him, he could barely walk after the game. The Rams got all the way to the Patriots' 27-yard line, but after a failed pass to the end zone, the ball was intercepted, and the Patriots' Goskowski came in with another field goal, this time 41 yards, which led to a final score of 13-3. The missed field goal also happened after... But let's move past it. The Rams have gotten beat enough and enough tonight. So there you have it, folks. The lowest scoring Super Bowl ever. Tom Brady picked up his sixth Super Bowl ring. And the Pats' six Super Bowl wins ties them with the Steelers for most in any NFL franchise. Congrats to Brady and Super Bowl MVP Julian Edelman. More on him later. And the rest of the Patriots. But for now, let's talk about the mayhem that got those teams into the Super Bowl. First, we have the AFC. Now, it was a great matchup between Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes. He's the Chiefs quarterback. And the Patriots were leading 17 to 7th when the fourth quarter started. But it quickly became 17-14 with a needed touchdown by Damian Williams for the Chiefs. Now, with 8.06 left in the game, Tom Brody throws an interception. And the last th five possessions of the half went as follows. Touchdown, 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 field goal. For those of you who can't do quick maths like me, that's a 31-31 tie game. The Pats got the ball with only 8 seconds left, which meant overtime. Now, I don't know about you, but I could always use a refresher on NFL overtime rules. Let's send it over to DP News overtime rules specialist, Gabby Paddock. Gabby? Thanks for that warm welcome, Drew, bro. The NFL overtime rules state that if a game ends in a tie after 60 minutes, the Patriots and the Chiefs will go into an overtime period. During overtime, both teams will begin a sudden death touchdown scoring. The first team that scores a touchdown will win and advance to the Super Bowl. And on the off chance that no team scores during overtime, the game will continue until one side scores. Back to you. Thanks, G. The Patriots won the coin flip, drove down the field like they were a Land Rover in the Savannah, and ended the game with a two-yard touchdown run by Rex Burkhead, which sent the Patriots to the Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes never even got a chance to get the ball back. Now, on to one of the most controversial moments we've seen in the NFL to date. This might be painful for Saints fans, so you might want to look away. With the Saints only needing a touchdown to get ahead in a 23-20 game versus the Rams, on third down with 148 left in the game, an obvious pass interference penalty on the Rams is not called by referees, forcing the Saints to kick a field goal, tying the game, sending it into overtime. Wait, another overtime? I don't even know how field goals work in overtime. Hopefully Gabby can tell us. If one team gets a field goal, the other team gets a possession. If the first team fails to score a field goal, the game will go into sudden death. Back to you, Judy B. Soon to be Hall of Famer Drew Brees threw an interception in overtime and the Rams won by a field goal. Once again, Greg Zuerlin. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell addressed the no call saying, that the game is human, the refs are human, and humans make mistakes, and that he never once considered undoing the finish of the game. 
New Orleans held a parade in protest of the Super Bowl, many bars replayed the 2010 Super Bowl rather than watching 53 live, and ratings for the Super Bowl in New Orleans were at all time low. To top all that off, a newspaper, The Times Picayune, had this as their headline Monday morning. All I know is that if I were Drew Brees, there would be hell to pay. Now, if that wasn't enough controversy for you, Super Bowl MVP Julian Edelman was suspended for the first four games of the regular season because of using performance-enhancing drugs in the prior season. Many believe that PEDU should warrant a suspension on all playoff games in the year following. This is not currently a rule in the NFL, but it is in Major League Baseball, and I wouldn't be surprised to see it added soon. Although the Rams were defeated, perhaps one of the biggest losses in the Super Bowl didn't come to Rams, but to SpongeBob fans all across the country. Over 1.2 million people signed a position prior to the game to have Sweet Victory, a song played in the SpongeBob episode Band Geeks, and they wanted this played at halftime. Now, a cryptic tweet from Maroon 5, which is the band that performed at halftime, led many fans, myself included, to assume that Sweet Victory would be played at halftime by Maroon 5. A small edited clip from the beginning of Sweet Victory was played at halftime, but then immediately transitioned into Travis Scott's sicko mode to the sadness of many people, and I personally was devastated. There you have it, folks. The Patriots win their sixth Super Bowl 98 days after the Red Sox won their ninth World Series. The same city winning consecutive championships in the NFL and MLB hasn't happened since 2004 when it was the Red Sox and the Patriots, huh? Now this has only happened seven times in the history of the two sports. ESPN is calling Super Bowl 53 the greatest defensive performance in the history of the sport, and it's really hard to argue. The Patriots dynasty continued on Sunday It'll be another year before anyone gets the chance to dethrone him. Until then, I'm Judah Brody reporting for DP New <laughs> Really guys, the, the Super Bowl wasn't even on Fox this year. It was on C